Greetings. So Portland's slowly decaying into being basically the 1970s and 80s New York. Yep, it's all come to the West Coast. I'm, it's bittersweet, to be honest. And by the way, welcome. Fake accounts, AI chatbots, and any organics that may actually be here. Yeah, this is Freedom Phil. Like and subscribe. Let's get into it. I'll explain. Look, I remember when the West Coast was a beautiful place. It was back when logging was still kind of a thing. Logging took a serious hit. Uh, fishing was dead when I was a kid. Big fishing was gone. So a lot of these stable jobs that a lot of people did are gone. And then the, uh, the other factor is that way back in the day, before drug testing became a thing, a lot of regular junkies before, you know, now fentanyl is a thing that's really wiping people out. And I could argue, I swear to God, sometimes I'm, is the government reading my mind? That's a joke. But I used to joke. I say, well, if they just started poisoning the drugs, they could clean up the homeless problem. Looks like that's what's happening. I called it Operation Raid. You know, like the can with the bug. You spray it and the bug explodes. They're like, Raid! <laughs> in this case, it'd be math! <laughs> but in this case, it's really fentanyl. And I know that makes me a horrible fucking person for making a dark joke like that. But, you know, what's really actually horrible is the factor that you have people that have gotten used to living on the streets. Now, I know that people are like, you don't know what it's like to be homeless. Oh, funny thing about this. See this gigantic van here? Um, this is my battle van. I actually have three different vehicles I, I live in. One, Well, it's either a, a Peterbilt, if I'm working, or whatever truck the company has, uh, my little blue van, or this big one. And I'd actually like to get like a Toyota Prius. I'm a professional homeless. You know, unlike a lot of these, you know, scruffers, I, I hate the uncouth scruffers on the streets. And why? Because a lot of the places I used to park my van are now blocked off. They now have signs. The, you have cops harassing you going, hey, you can't be here. Now, five five to ten years ago, I had no problems parking in a lot of those places. So I got I got a bone to pick with a lot of these, you know, herpes pockmarked looking motherfuckers. And when I say that, I'm referring to the fact that they set up their tents next to the parks and the freeways, and then your city looks like it has herpes. Maybe if you got you know, like all the same color tarps, it would solve some of the problem. Like they're all the same shade of green, whatever the grass looks like. You know, that way it looks less like you know a, a collage of a puked collage of a bad quilt of homeless people. Now, I know I'm supposed to empathize with a lot of these people, but the reality is, is that you've made it so damn easy to be so quote unquote poor in America. And really the poor in America, if they're smart, they get on the system like they fake crazy or something, get a free apartment or they crank out a kid and get an apartment that way. Free food, free, uh, you know, internet, free cell phones, free, free friggin' everything. But then you got the people who just cannot keep it together. And those are the people that end up, uh, you know, they, they do a lot of drugs. Um, they're probably actually real. A lot of them are actually mental cases. And if they're not, living on the streets and doing a lot of heavy drugs will turn you into a mental case. So back in the day when you had these, like, when you used to have a bunch of, like, golem, you know, Lord of the Rings golem motherfuckers running around. They were high on meth, robbing people's tool sheds and stuff. That was one thing. But now you have a drug that basically wipes them out. Once again, Operation Raid. And I know, I know I'm a fucking demon coming up with that concept but i mean think about think about the genius of it you have a situation where you can just blame the cartels and then you can the republicans can say you know oh god it's a fentanyl coming over from china which you know it is coming over there from the asian area let's not bullshit ourselves but it actually takes care of a problem that you don't really want to deal with anyways it's actually great for the liberals too because for all their alleged empathy they're not stopping this problem. In fact, they, they allow it. They, they encourage it. You know, I mean, I'm all for helping people that are actually down, down and out. Like, you know, when you have a church soup kitchen or a soup kitchen in general, food banks and whatnot. But a lot of these people, they're not down and out. They're just not trying at all. And so you have a constant underculture. That makes things kind of shitty and worse, which makes a lot of the people that actually have their act together say, hey, we want to pull a Jefferson's and moving on out, moving on up, moving on out to wherever it's better, which happened back in the 1960s, 70s and 80s with the cities. And honestly, probably had mostly in the 60s and in the early 70s. And basically what happened then is they, oh, it was white flight. Well, no, no, no. You mean the people that have their act together that can move out, moved out, just like with the Jefferson's. Don't think that's just a white thing. That's an everybody thing. And so. What's left is businesses, either businesses don't exist. And why don't we go into a part of the reason your businesses don't exist? Because it wasn't so many years ago that Portland, Seattle, and all these nice little places were kick-ass places to be. 
Back in the day, people were building businesses, whether it was tech, breweries, and all that stuff. As the fall of logging, fishing, and everything else went down, people replaced it with, you know, these new new age style businesses. But was it like three, four years ago when you had all your Antifa and BLM protests, you're tearing down statues, you're burning shit down, and all this other crap? <laughs> and basically, basically people looked at their broken windows, stolen products. Oh, wait, wait, here's one that I've, I've seen happen a lot too. This, if, if that wasn't a nail in a coffin that, for those protests and all that crap, this is probably what actually convinced a lot of people that it wasn't worth sticking around. When they make laws that say you can uh, basically steal as long as it isn't over $1,000, and they don't say you can steal, but you're not going to prosecute unless it's over $1,000. Well, quite quickly, flash mobs, and by the way, this isn't just like homeless scruffers doing this. This is literally people that are organized. And then they turn around, probably sell the crap online or some other stuff or pawn it for drugs. You know, like, wow, surprise, when you made it not a crime to rob people under a certain amount, maybe the people that have their act together decide they're going to move out. So you have less jobs. You have a crumbling city. You have a, a populace that generally, I'm, not, like, I'm going to point this out. I'm not exactly a huge fan of the cops either. But you have a population that literally, if anything goes wrong, in any sort of racial way, not even if the cops are racist, they're going to get thrown under the bus. So cops are like, well, I'm either quitting being a, a police officer or I'm just going to move to some city that isn't fucking insane. Wow, surprise. You don't have enough police. You got a bunch of drug addled scruffers that are dying on a daily basis. And you got people that are finally wising up and they're moving out. I wonder why your city's falling apart. Just like Seattle, just like San Francisco just like Portland, just like anywhere this mentality has become normalized. And it's sad because I remember when a lot of these places were actually pretty okay. But I guess, I guess, you know, it's just the new thing that you're going to have your kid walking through the grocery store parking lot and they're got to get used to seeing, you know, junkies needles sitting around or some guy fucking shitting himself in the grass because he doesn't, he's fucking unconscious or he doesn't even give a shit. He's doing a protest shit. I guess that's the new normal that we're all just supposed the, dec the, the declining, the declining standards. And I, what I want to point out is we can move. This isn't communism yet. People can move to somewhere better. I mean, you know, when you look at the decline of the, the Soviet Union and the East Bloc in general, that was something that was governmental and kind of structured. So there was some hope that you could fix it. But when you're trying to fix something in a crazy city that's literally trying to kill itself, destroy itself. There's no hope. And so I, I just wonder, will it get so bad that it will collapse or is it going to be one of those situations where the people that could save the city moved out already? They've already left. So all you're going to have left is junkies, crazy leftists, and dipshits. This is the legacy of the bad politics and fucking just stupidity level of thinking. Of the West Coast. That's why when I tell people, you know, like I, I, I got land on the West Coast, but I live in the fucking sticks. I live in the middle of nowhere. You, the things you got to worry about out there are pretty much maybe mice or meth heads. You know, <laughs> there's some power tools there. The precious, you know, like that type of shit. And I got to tell you, yeah, people have told me, you know, putting up those those ring cameras, that makes a huge difference. But I ain't got to do you no good in the cities. So... I don't know. I've talked on this for a while. It's my thoughts. Um, I'd love to see those cities rebuild and slowly become something great again, but it's going to take a serious change in leadership. And I think, honestly, it's slowly becoming exactly like California, where you got jungle primaries and it's not going to happen. It's going to collapse and it's going to drag a lot of people down with it. So flush the toilet on Portland, Seattle, and every other West Coast city. Freedom Phil, take it easy.